You're listening to BFM 89.9, the business station. You're listening to BFM 89.9, the business station. Good evening, it's The Bigger Picture and I'm Mira Sevasodhi. Um, the lysosome is commonly referred to as the cell's recycling center because it processes unwanted material into substances that the cell can utilize. Now, lysosomes break down this unwanted matter via enzymes and highly specialized proteins essential for survival. Lysosomal disorders are triggered when a particular enzyme exists in too small an amount or is missing altogether. And when this happens, substances accumulate in the cell. And in other words, when the lysosome doesn't function normally, excess products destined for breakdown and recycling are stored in the cell. And then we start to have problems after. And joining us today to talk about the lysosomal storage disorder is Dr. Mulok Hock, a consultant geneticist in Hospital Kuala Lumpur, and Chia Ken Foon, the secretary of the president uh, of the Malaysian Diseases, uh, Lysosomal Diseases Association. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Ngo, Dr. what is a lysosomal storage disorder? I mean, could you sort of, I know I did an introduction there, but half of which I'm not terribly sure I even, you know, tr- I'm trying to figure out and picture it. What actually happens when you have an LSD or a storage disorder? Um, lysosomal storage disease, or in short, we call it uh, LSD. Uh, it's a group of uh, diseases, more than 50 different diseases that's uh, caused by lack of enzyme in the lysosome. So as uh, you have mentioned uh, just now, uh, uh, lysosome, no, lysosome is, a, is, a, is, a, is a compartment in the cell. Right. So, so our body is, uh, is a make of billions of uh, cells. That's the basic functioning, functioning units of, of our body. So in, in each cell, we have different compartments. We have nucleus that store the genetic information. We have mitochondria that um, uh, pro- provides uh, energy to the cell. And we have this lysosome. Lysosome, the, the, the function of the lysosome is to, as a recycling center, all the different uh, material in the cell will be sent to the lysosome uh, to, be, to be repaired, to be processed, to be recycled. So to carry out this uh, process, lysosomal have uh, a, a, a different kinds of en- chemical. We call it enzyme. So uh, there's a there's a there's a many different enzyme in this lysosome. Each enzyme will carry out a particular fun- uh, function. So if one of these enzyme is missing because of genetic factor, then uh, a particular uh, material cannot be recycled. This will accumulate in the in the lysosome, in the cell, in the tissue, in the organ, and causing causing disease. Uh, so the so this um, this is not a single disease, there because there's a uh, there's a uh, more than uh, fifty different enzymes in the lysosome. Sure. So what about the materials that are recycled? Do what sort of can you give me an example of what is actually recycled uh, using these enzymes? It, yeah, it's it's a uh, it's a lot of complex. Um, complex material, complex molecule that uh, require for our normal body function. Right. For example, like uh, 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 glyco, I mean glycan, I, I sorry the, the name is, uh, <laughs> is, is, uh, is very scientific name. Uh, this uh, substance is required for, uh, is a part of the tissue for the joint, for the, for the cornea in our eye, for the heart valve, so it's a, it's a normal material in our, in, our, in our body. So this material need to be recycled, need to be repaired from time to time, just like we need to service like our, our vehicle. Right. So, so if uh, uh, to, to, to carry out this uh, function, the lysosome need a specific chemical enzyme. So if this enzyme is not working, so this normal substance will be accumulating in the body. Okay. Glycogen, you said. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so that's one of the, the materials that is yeah, normally yeah, recycled. Yeah. And if you lack that enzyme, then glycogen cannot be recycled. Um, what you mentioned there are 50 types of LSDs, 50 types of lysosomal storage disorders. That's what correct. are What are they? Um, uh, well, 50 is a lot, but what yeah, are the common ones? I, I, I can give a few examples. Uh, a lot of these names are... Uh, 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 quite difficult to pronounce uh, for f- 
for the for the public, mm-hmm. even for the some of the medical professional. Sure. So for example, example like so small so like is this is like mucopolysaccharidosis, metachromatic leukodystrophy, Gaucher disease, Febri disease, Pompe disease. This is some of the example. Sure. And yeah. Pompe is the one um, that yeah. has the glycogen storage problem. Correct. That's okay. Correct. Um, does it only affect children? This disorder? No. It's, uh, it affects uh, both children and adults. So if the enzyme is uh, completely uh, missing, then uh, the symptom usually ap- appear in the in the young children, in the young infant. But uh, some uh, individual may have some residual enzyme DVD. So this uh, individ- uh, this uh, individual, their presentation may be delayed to adolescent to adulthood. Right. Yeah. Okay. And um, so it is a genetic disorder. That is correct. Okay. Yeah. Um, Ken Fun, how did you sort of find out your children? You have two children. Um, they are seven and eleven, and they both have Pompe, the Pompe disease, yeah. which is um, uh, one of the lysosomal storage disorders, um, whereby glycogen storage is is disrupted. Could you? How did you find out your children had it? Um, okay. Um, it started off with uh, I have two girls. The elder one is 11, like you have mentioned. The el- youngest one is uh, 7. It started off with my younger baby because she sh- seemed to have a more serious problem than the sister. Okay, at about 1 year old, we noticed she, uh, she cannot uh, crawl, she cannot stand up, nor can she walk, which is very normal for any other uh, children. You know, any other children would be at least be able to hold on and walk mm-hmm. a little bit, right? She cannot do. She can't do none of this. Besides, uh, she had uh, frequent pneumonia, coughing after coughing. You know, seems that every month I have to send her to the clinic. And um, at uh, one year old, there's one uh, specialist uh, suspect something uh, serious happening to her, and uh, want me to admit her immediately to the GH Suremban. It is there that we notice uh, she's not normal as any other child. Okay. And how did you how do you diagnose this condition, Doctor Wu? Is it a blood test? Um it uh, depends um what sort of disease that we, we are we are talking about. So different uh the lysos- lysosomal disease, the way that we, we approach the diagnosis may be slightly different. Sure. But in general we can uh, uh the diagnosis relies on uh, blood tests where we measure the specific lysosomal enzyme. I see. So it can be done yes, can via be done. a blood test. Is that what they did for you, um, Ch- uh, Ken Fun? Uh, did they do a blood test and then determine uh, that she had Pompe? Well, uh, initially uh, we were in the GH Stremban. They don't have the specialist on this uh, particular area. Even the doctors uh, suspect her to have another disease. Mm-hmm. Okay. Then only when I told them that, you know, my other daughter had having the same similar uh, growth chart pattern, unlike my middle son, which is very active. My do- two daughters happen to be uh, a bit passive. So uh, from there, actually, uh, they refer us to cardiologists because the heart is very big, in apparently, my, my younger baby. An really? enlarged heart, is it? Yes. Okay. So um, we were referred to IGN, and even uh, at IGN, the doctor was telling us, you know, nothing much they can do because it seems to them that this is something genetic based, you know, it's something to do with the enzyme, the suspect, and they re- after that, then they refer us to uh, Dr. News team, right. which where then uh, we have a series of uh, imbedi- investigation. Uh, they have done the blood testing. They had, uh, I think, uh, some some of the. My other daughter had the liver tissue, the muscle tissue being extracted to check for the anomalies. Then uh, from there, they, they know it is uh, it is also called glycogen storage right. because they have uh, elevated glycogen in the t- both the tissues. But glycogen storage, they are, they, are, they are more than one. Then from there, they took three drops of blood to be sent to Australia for testing. Mm-hmm. From there only, we had the confirmed diagnosis, which is Pompeii or glycogen storage type 2. Right. Dr. Ngu, do you have enough people specialized in this area to sort of diagnose? Uh, because it looks like, it seems like it can mimic other conditions as well. That's very true. It's, uh, it can present with a, with a common uh, medical problem. And, uh, uh, and uh, 
so the the to make a diagnosis it can be very difficult, especially in the early stage of the disease. Um, we we do have uh, 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 some uh, uh, doctor that specialize in this area in this country that can uh, 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 make a diagnosis. Uh, we 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 do have uh, certain tests that are available in the country. Um, but some more specialized tests like the enzyme testing, uh, we we need to outsource to our F, uh, F, uh, a laboratory in other countries. Right, okay. Uh, and um, what are some of the LSD red flags, Doctor? I mean, what should we be looking out for? Um, that's um, uh, that's um, a, a difficult, difficult question. That's because uh, it, it's not a single disease, it's a, it's a many different diseases. So different diseases, they are the way they manifest clinically is uh, slightly different. Um, so for example, like Pompe disease, so their early uh, red flags uh, symptoms will be they, they, are, they are floppy, they are floppy infant, they have a large heart, so they have a large liver, so these are early early symptoms. For l other lysosomal like disease like mucopolysaccharidosis or MPS, so they the the children will be normal at birth. So only after at the late of uh, infancy or early childhood, they start to show signs like uh, uh, hernia, which is uh, which is uh, usually uncommon in the in the young children. They 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 may have uh, uh, coarse faces, means their 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 appearance, their facial appearance changes with time. Uh, they have uh, a large uh, liver or, or spleen, and 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 they have recurrent uh, ear infection, uh, recurrent uh, chest infection. So these are the, some of the possible early uh, manifestations. Fine. Okay, um, is Pompe one of the common uh, lysosomal storage disorders in Malaysia? Um, yeah, the is one of the more common uh, uh, lysosomal storage disease in Malaysia, especially amongst. Um, Chinese, mm -hmm. but we do have cases among Malays and others uh, uh, group as well. Sure. And um, is in general the prevalence of lysosomal storage disorder in Malaysia? Would you say it's very rare? Uh, each individual disease are very rare. Rare in uh, in terms of like one case in uh, half a million uh, uh, population. Uh, but because it's uh, 50, more than 50 different diseases, so you, if you add on, it, it may be as common as uh, one in uh, uh, 5,000 to one in 10,000 uh, people. That's quite high. Yeah, it, it's not. It's not rare. It's not, it's not rare. No, it's not rare at all. Coming up, we'll find out more about lysosomal storage disorder. If you have a question for us, text us 016-201-9000 or you can tweet us at BFM Radio. You're listening to BFM 89.9, the business station. Good afternoon. It's The Bigger Picture and it's Mira Sevasudi. In our health and living segment today, we're discussing lysosomal storage disorder with Dr. Ngu Lok Hock, the consultant geneticist from um, Hospital Kuala Lumpur, and Chia Ken Foon, who is the secretary of the, uh, of the Malaysia Lysosomal Diseases Association. And um, Ken Foon also has two children, um, an 11-year-old and a 7-year-old, who have the Pompe disease, which is a form of lysosomal storage disorder. Now, uh, Kian Fun, you know, as a mother who cares for two children, what are some of your challenges? I mean, your children are 11 and 7. How are they progressing? How are they, um, you know, um, coping with the challenges? Um, okay. I, having two uh, girls with Pompeii wasn't an easy task. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, first of all, the, the, there are a lot of time sacrifices like uh, every two weeks, I got to bring my daughters to HKL. I, I, uh, by the way, I stay in Seremban. Mm -hmm. Every two weeks, no fail, I got to bring them to HKL to s receive the treatment. And the treatment is just not, it's just not like, you know, you can go there, you know, you uh, just have a jab and then you can go home. Every two weeks, the children has to go through uh, uh, needle piercing. Every two weeks, they have to set the line. They get ready themselves, uh, and uh, the treatment actually lasts four hours. It's an intravenous treatment, yes. is it? Okay. Yeah. Carry on. So, uh, so first of all, it's painful. The second thing is time-consuming, and uh, it's actually it's into their school time. We can't do it uh, during uh, weekends because the hospital is uh, is not staffed. Uh, the doctors are not around, mm -hmm. so we have to do it uh, during the weekdays. 
so uh, there's no uh, we can't uh, and they are 